Hello Lord and Ladies, Private Yorkie here, back from the pump. Now, it's possible some of you watched some of the previous run we were having, the Harim of Hope, which got quite a distance-ish. <coughs> so why did it disappear? Well, here's the thing. Having moved to the new machine, several uh, setting, uh, several uh, videos on a couple of games got messed up real bad. I mean, real bad. It wasn't good at all. Um, and then the save itself got messed up, so I couldn't use it. So I did what I could and took it off, and I'm restarting. Hopefully, for the last time. I'm a little frustrated with all the ha problems I've had with this game, honestly. Now, previously I did Daring. I'm going to Core. But I'm putting Death Door on. Because I don't want... I mean, I don't mind doing a bit of save scumming. I don't want to have to save every single second in case I screw up and get the, get the leader killed. I don't I don't like it without Death Door, honestly, because it's just too stupid. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you leaked won't like that, but that's tough. Play it the way I like. Going for a custom character and we're going to go different. This one is killing time. And we're going to go for the lady. Let's step back to... Ow. Stop chewing me, you daft bugger. I'm not food. Well, I suppose I am if, you, if I was dead. But I'm not dead, so I'm not food. Alright. Going to go with Tiefling. We're not going to focus mostly on romance, but we're going to do the romances when they show up. This is called Killing Time, and I don't know if this is going to work at all. I'm going to try. Anyway, we're going to start with a ranger. Oh, was it a ranger we started with? Not sure, actually. I know it was a hunter, that was it. Occluding scoundrel. And my intention, she's going to be evil. Neutral evil, because she's a hunter. Hunter. Um, the, the, the thing is, she's going to end up becoming an assassin. Uh, fairly quickly. But she's going to be a frontline hunt, uh, huntress. And we'll just have to see how it goes. Tiefling. And we're looking for plus dex and plus int. Dex and int minus wisdom. Dex and width minus int, no. Dex and charisma minus width, no. Uh, yeah, dex and int minus charisma. Now, as a huntress, you need to have some. Um, she needs to have some uh, ways for her spells, but she's going to be, as I said, a. Uh, <coughs> she's going to very rapidly be an assassin. And they get bonuses from there. Take that down a little. That gives them uh, second level spells. The risk will take that down on front. So. I think that will work. She's not going to get above third level spells, so level 4 I'll be adding a point to that so she can get third level. After that, I'm probably going to focus on uh, Int for her assassin skills. X at 5 is good enough, I think. Like I say, I've not tried this before. It might be an utter, utter, utter failure. But we will see. Trickery and stealth, absolutely. Persuasion will be plus 2. Do I want to use that? Perception I want to use. 
I don't really care about athletics being on her, whether she's a leader, so there will be times I probably need that. And then the knowledge of world and nature. I think that will do nice. Because I don't want to use too many that have got negatives. Um, that's fine. Weapon finesse, because she's going to be uh, an assassin. She's going to be using um, finesse weapons because her, well, apart from anything else, I've nuked her strength. So strength weapons are going to be crap. Weapon finesse makes way for advanced weapon finesse type stuff that lets you use her strength as a damage. Now I'm going to give her. As a colluding scoundrel, she, scares, she shares her uh, teamwork feats with her pet. I'm trying to decide which pet to go. I think we're going to go with a wolf, because the chip can be very useful in combat. You put someone down and when they stand up, they're getting whacked by everyone around them. The animal companion's bite attack deals 1d4 points of acid damage. The acid deals another 1d4 point to the target on the next round. The acid continues to deal a damage one additional round per forecaster level. Trouble is, everything's got acid uh, thing. So that's not much good. Lead blades. Lead blades increases the momentum and density of your we melee weapons just as they strike a foe. Uh, one minute per level. All melee weapons you are carrying when the spell is cast deal damage as if one size category larger than they actually are. For instance, medium longsword deals 1d8 points of damage, who deal 2d6 instead. I think that's going to be useful, especially since right now she does, she does have a minus one on attack damage from uh, what he says. And then uh, attack and damage rolls boosted for the pet. Uh, can only use that, of course, when, when, you know, not all the time, in other words. Uh, she's got to be evil, so she can't be that, but she can be Gosri. Dualistic deity of nature, born of storm and sky, and also goddess of wave and surf. Born of the ocean's fury and the wind's wrath, Gosri is a fickle deity. Neutral evil, so she can be an assassin. Evilish. He turned blue. All right, hairstyle. Nice, lovely bald. That'll do nice. Arms. Will work. Deep red horns. A wall paint. Going black and red. Don't look black yet. Oh. Not like that red. Let's go. Let's go that red. Deep, but not too bad. Right. Follow if you dare. I won't take that. And it's killing time. Nia. In Nia added as a lady to eight century. Alright, let's just flip this so when shall I stop TikTok? When do you think I should stop? TikTok says stop now. How about this one, Tiki? When do you think I should stop? Gonna look your head when I should stop? You're gonna? Yeah, there you go. It'll work. I lead. You follow. And there she is. Neutral evil. Looting scoundrel. It'll be good. It'll be okay anyway.
Okay, Greg coming through, fetch a healer quick. <laughs> hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this. But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't she be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch? You'll get yours. I'm decided on all the companions I want hey, to have with me usually. But some metal. Now, what's the matter? What happened to her? The wound looks nasty. Who did this to her? You hear the stern voice of my old little man. Oh wait, you can't even turn your head. Demons, prelate. We found her barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take her weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. She can get her things back after the festival. O oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy, heal her wounds. The magic envelops you, but your pain lessens all this likely. Grit your teeth in silence, because the less you say, the less that bugger can use against you. My powers are not enough here. <laughs> That's my thought anyway. You there! Yes, you! Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful! Go and get Perendelev. I'm a heathen. I don't trust Inquisitor. We got history. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. The lady raises her head in an affection of surprise. Affectation of surprise. Terendelev! Has anyone seen Terendelev? Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. I don't remember. You don't remember at all? All right, we'll wait until your memory returns. <coughs> My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor woman. She has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of her. <laughs> all right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that, so I shall defer to your wisdom. But be on your guard. I've been informed she was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I, not the defenders of the city. Muttering discontentedly, the old man walks off. I loose the grudging grip of pain, cast off the veil of suffering flesh, let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. A beautiful silver-haired woman leans over you. She seems ageless, her face wholly unlined, but centuries old sadness gleams in her eyes. The longer she speaks, the stronger her voice becomes. Now go. Certainly, but be careful. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not yet healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Yep. Eat, drink, and be happy. Be merry. No. Eat and drink, merry? No, I don't know. Alright. Quick change here on the options. Tutorials. Off, 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 off. Off, 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 and off.
I still don't think it turns all the buggers off. Might hopefully do. Do this one. Punch it. I'm right in the jaw. You call that a punch here? Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> uh oh. then big fight with demons Discari, Lord of Locusts, leave my city. Not, not sure he wants to do that The half thing is now uh, half thing time with this blast with blood and he is um, to the teeth. With a sword, a blade and a hatchet on his belt. And a crossbow on his back. Yeah, give me the weapon. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the heart of a demon lord even. It's a light crossbow, dude. Good luck. Try not to get eaten now. The half things were drowned out by a terrible rumbling and the rustling of many countless wings. Oh, I well, this guy is shoulder. The mortal man snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, Iomane. Behold the death I saw. And down we go. Silver dragon Terendeleb, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Right, you. My wolf. Uh, I think the aggressor. Where are we going? What does the question do? Oh, bleeding strike sounds nice. Eh, yeah. Uh, that's an improvement to bleeding strike and the improvement more. Alright, aggressor's good. And we will go stealth. And we will go classics. And he's, a, he's not a great agile thing, so there's no point in doing that. No point in doing weapon pit. Not super agile.
We can get the barding, but that's not going to be available yet. Um. Let's do dodge for a plus one AC. Midnight, that's a good one. Just flip through, I heard a baby cry. There we go. Work. I'm Gothrin and he's Gothrin. Nice. Alright, so there we go. A small woman with messy brown hair winters in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Yeah, and the wolf. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? The young woman in night time has... Oh, she's talking to her. Studies the rocks intently. Clearly trying to work out how to move them. I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terenda left healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Uh, hold on. Oh, it's going to make me use that. That'll work. Got to try and prove the strength of itself, find something to use as a lever. Hey, Eld, I only needed a bloody five. Well, it, could, it would fail 20% of the time, so... Either sticks you found out to it below, just use them correctly. You never come to nothing. I don't think you're gonna get anywhere with that. Why don't I just... Using all the strength, the knight moves the boulder and drags the wounded woman out from under the rubble. Making sure her charge is alright, the knight allows herself to catch her breath and wipes wet from her brow. Oh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm Anevia Tiravade, of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened though? Now that I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. One field of leg fitting a piece of twine out of pocket to get to work. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. You've done very well for yourself, you're on level one. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald, with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Bela's expression darkens. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? I need your eyes shift to you. Uh, okay. Uh, travel, I just wound up here Call by chance. Superstitious, if you want, or maybe cynical. But I just don't believe in chance or coincidences. <laughs> How many stories around the tavern table have started with those very words? Right enough. I have this habit, see? Anytime somebody starts yakking about blind chance, it always turns out that the thing was as far from a quirk of fate as you could want. Sorry, don't take it personal, like. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. 
All right, hop along, let's go. And Evie tightly ties off the twine on her improvised splint, and landing on a stick holds herself to her feet. To summarize, there are three of us with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters, beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. What weapon do I... He's, he's got his bite, of course. I have nothing at the moment. Who now? Only a bow would not... We're not on board with the front line. Now these two, Nevia cannot be a companion, he's a background NPC. Sela is going to be one of my companions. Um, she starts a paladin, but I'm not interested in the spells, I'm interested in the combat and she's going to become a dragon of some kind. Alright, I've got weapon finesse. Long sword. Old iron short sword, that's finesse wielding, that's plus 5 to hit, but it only does 1 to 5 damage, it's not very good, but it is cold iron, which is essential right now, now these, that's exact, that's, that's good enough actually, Endless scale, resurrect people. We don't really want to use it. Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip the rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to tell if it's human or animal. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought, naively it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. The girl relaxes slightly, but she keeps a hand on her sheathed weapon. Her self-control falters from her on, and you glimpse her fear beneath a mask of perfect lucidity. She licks her lips nervously. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to keep Camellia with us long term. I mean, she's going to be in the uh, math group, but in the specific party, I don't know. Because she covers the kind of things that I'm already covering. Essentially, the rogue aspects and the stealth fighter. Uh, um, what she's going to end up being is uh, probably um, a duelist. Not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive. Albeit underground. Descari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Durandalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? <sighs> and maybe she takes ahead. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Camellia finishes a Nibia thought with ruthless precision. You want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? We need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around That's here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let us see if this bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. Uh. 
Not a knife. Not needed. Uh, we can equip that. Well, we can also equip that. For now. I'm probably going to make her a two-weapon fighter long term. Let's have a look. Because well, these are kind of all front line, aren't they? You can go ahead. Charge into battle. Move out. Do not fear. Do not waver. That would give me eight max decks. That's five max decks, so that's better. At least to Head on. good enough, I say. That's fine. That's another Terendula scale. We are the light. They are the darkness. And you got a couple of these. Right. Now we need to sit down, Tiki. We need to not be a pain, don't we? I'm a plus one equip. Yes. But somewhere down here, body or something. Ah, there it is. Lit up like a flashlight. I lead, you follow. Or in this world, lit up like a torch. We're headed backwards, what are we doing? Get back here. Mickey, can you sit down? Don't sit down, you'll have to get down. You don't want to do that, do you? You like to be in it, don't you? That's a good lad. making clucking noises. You're not a chicken. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. We've got the hiccups, boy. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realise that you have never encountered such a creature before. The stranger looks like the worker of his sectionist, 
We attempt to stick together a lizard and a man. The man notices you and freezes. Oh, I've got an itchy nose. Did you get hair on my nose? Is that it? The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? When she, uh, the woman looks as strange as a companion, like, well, do you want to go down then? Go on then, Tiki. Like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Team is a lang waste of cannabis. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. Land's expression hardens. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. Wendwag looks you over, considering something. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Uh, what are you doing here? It's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? When do I cough the breath? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which... You're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. He chuckles. Now, both of these two start out with you. You end up choosing one uh, when you get through here, very quickly. Normally, I would have chosen her, and I did on the Harim run. But this time, I'm choosing um, him. He starts out as an archer, which is an arch a good archer build, but I'm going to make him a druid as well. Um, all this all there's thought of holy flame. How did it end up down here? Came here with its owner a long time ago, fifty thousand gongs to be precise. Seventy years in Uplander time. Fifty thousand gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. When do I grow all's land with an irritated land? Uh, land? The angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan, watch your tongue. We'll help you. Well, we'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. And expression brightens. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. Move out! Now, what is that? What do we have here? Now what is that? Head on! Oh, 
come back to this side. No, nope, that's not it. I think over here we might be able to learn something from. And get a little bit of stuff. The statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly uh, crafted with genius feeling. Oh, genuine feeling. Judging by the style of armor the knight is from the First Crusade. I found something over there. Mm, there's a thought. A strange flash pierces the gloom, and Kinia feels drops of fearing re uh, blood run down her chest. The wound healed by Terendal every opens and weeps scarlet. There is no pain or weakness, a hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one, or another one entirely. Kinia's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into her mind. Thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery, they betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my trusted friends, the people I swore to protect, the people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are up ahead in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any, any closer? Do they believe I am about to die from their treacherous blows? Next to me a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run but I will not. Once I have, still have the strength, I must. While well, recognising the foreign origin of these thoughts, Kinia intuits that she can control them somehow. Curiously call out the traitors. The voice, trembling with pain and rage, carries to the farthest reaches of the cave, feeling in the strange vision. Why? Why did you betray me and your comrades? Why did the servants of the abyss tempt... Uh, what did it tempt you with? Bird shapes the face of several mortals bleed into existence. Dictate? No. One of them, a young half-elf with his hair twisted in a knot, responds to the accusations. You and your goddess have given us nothing, Lariel. Nothing. The Lord Descari uh, will give us everything. There is no power in the world that will stop his advance. The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster. He sounds like they're idiots. You don't trust demons. Unless I become one. Uh, like a rutting river, and the images flash by one after another. Uh, a priestess in colourful robes observes the stars. A young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword. A majestic golden-winged angel. Gazing into the distance, his face covered with a helmet. But his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing and only if you're ready. There is no going back. There in the vision, the darkness of the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirping and uh, rustling emanates from the shadow. The sound piercing like hot irons, planting through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot, Kinia's head pounds with pain, and it's no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel, who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it. Need a six on that. Need a seven on that. The kid is determined to fight off the illusion. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying, but Kinia is stronger. He shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It's not real, it exists only in his vision or memory. But the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. Shadow's features starkly resemble those of Discardis, terrifying demon lord. In a moment as swift as thought itself, the monster hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lariel. The foolish angel, struggling on the rocks, like a fly with its wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whisper to a sonorous shout. Becoming young, then old and quavering, 
Where is your goddess angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is it that when you are dying here alone so far from the light of heaven? A strange calm enveloped the thoughts of the one called Ariel. He recognises who stands before him and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flames to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering with multicoloured sparks, like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash. The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Ariel's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks, his vitality is ebbing. But his pride remains undimished. Undiminished. Uh, the, he grips the sword, and with his last burst of strength, of strength thrusts it into the rock. In the sense of the vision is fading, the rotty of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing she hears, he says, You will kill me, monster, this I know. But one day someone will come here and raise up the sword. They will raise it and... Punish evildoers and traitors. The vision disp disappears, vanishing in a burst of colours. Kinnia does not hear the final words, but she seems to contemplate the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from her lips, and with them, something else. Spittle. Oh no. The heat blazing in Kinnia's chest fades away. The uh, edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Kinnia sees a flaming sword in the hand, or rather, its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes, and the light is drawn into her hand. Kinnia senses that it will return. All she need do is call it. Hey! Are you alright? You were kinda glowing just now. Taylor kneels before the light, offering up a prayer to Amade. Was it the light of heaven? But how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? You saw it too. The traces of the dying girl. It's only us here. Your group, you, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got uh, sucked into you. Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kind of need it. Any chance you can whip it out again? I'll answer that. He's romantic. Lan looks around. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, <laughs> it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sum. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and we'll get back our kin. Lan rubs his chin anxiously. And what if she can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. It seems I can control it. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing. Heaven has truly blessed you. This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? When do I stare at the divine light as if transfixed? Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then... The perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Lan drags his gaze away from it. Lan looks at you pleadingly. They did see a chief, and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. Right. I don't think we're getting it for going back this time, no. See, it's worth going backwards and forwards on a mobility check like this. Because you get points for crossing the first time. And you get points in either direction usually, but... Um, this one gives you zero crossing back.
We got some loot. That's a healing staff. I only needed two. Six, you need five. You're all fine. Thanks, Land. You're so awesome. Got there or there coming back as well. There's a skeleton there. Move out. Can't hide from me. We are the light. They are the darkness. When do I glance at Lan who is fixing his slip bowstring and quickly walks over to you? A cat like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you and I are the only two people who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, Dots, you're the light of heaven to soul. I'll think about it, let's go. Dots, you're the chief of light, I'll lead you through the mess of the surface, I swear it. Anything we missed? Yes, something there. Get it in. And out we go. And we're approaching the village, so let's just run around. Your first impression of the mongrel village is a squalid little dump with an odour to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watching from the gloom. And deformed shadows slope between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyeless fish, while others are repairing fishing nets. All the signs of normal village life, but the tense expectation hangs in the air. A heavy set aged mongrel slowly shuffles his way towards you. The hair on his head grows in limp, wispy strands, and his face is distinctly rat like appearance, with pronounced teeth, and you hear a rattling sound in his chest and every breath he takes. One of his eyes is white, fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders say, end times are upon us, indeed. Chief Soul, we found the angel sword, and we found the one who can wield it. Land points at you. She had a vision, and now the angel sword, together with the light of heaven, are somehow inside her. Gather the tribe, everyone who can hold a weapon. The young ones are still alive, we can go save them. Soul raises his hand with ragged broken fingernails. Ah, Lan, always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty, too hasty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. So lies you up and down. An uplander with the light of heaven. That's too good for us. Our kind don't have good things happen. There's always a catch. And thrust people because he likes to believe. Isn't that right, Lan? I'm the chief. I don't work on faith. Show me the light. When do I stare at you intently? Like a cat watching a bird and shakes her head in warning. Now this one is where you choose between them. If you don't show the light, you get hurt. If you do, you get hit. Reveal the light of heaven. Land speaks the truth. The heavenly flame flares the life at your unspoken command. Bright, pure, dancing with multicoloured sparks, like a sunbeam passing through stained glass. The mongrels abandon their tasks and stare transfixed. The light is bright, but not blinding. It is warm, but the warmth is so deep. 
you performed a lawful action. Holy silent for a while, tears are streaming down his face, his wide pale face, but the old man doesn't even care to wipe them away. Though it's true, the angel did not forsake us. No, he came back. Back from the dead he came to save our children. Lan gives you a nod of thanks. The scaled half of his face is indifferent, but the human half is visibly relieved. As if he wasn't sure all this time you would support him. When do I kiss as you like an angry cat? See these fishermen and hunters, these husks of men and women, their blood will be on your hands. You have the blessing of the angels. Uh, I'm not responsible for others' decisions. When do I styles in fury? And why are they making those decisions? Because of you. You've sealed their fate. You're a murderer. You always think the worst, Wendu. We're not on our way, uh, on our own on this anymore. We've got allies. Well, a couple at least. But one's a f one good fighter's worth ten bad ones. You have the right of it, Lan. But we need us. We're going to wait. I sent a messenger to some of the, all the other tribes. It will take time, yes. But, when, but they will come. They will all come for the light. Wait, Lan. Wait up, Landis. Rest a while in one of the huts. Our home is your home. Lan sighs. All right, Chief, understood. Let's hope that a few hours isn't the difference between life and death for those kids. If they ask me what took us so long, I'll tell them it was your decision. When do I go and the grits are teeth in silence? Right, so we got these. Me. I'm colluding scoundrel. Now, if you look at the assassin, what it needs, what we're going to be going for, is just stealth five. Boom, 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 boom. Uh. Which do I drop? I'll drop Nate down to one and put that on there. I want to keep doing persuasion because it'll be time to have to use her for persuasion, see. So I shot. No, not ranged weapons. Outflank. Get two more spells. Uh. Do some of the nature ally. There will be times that's useful, and it is one minute per level. We can use that, or we can get entangle. Do I want her to be control? I'm not sure I do. I don't want her to be blasting, that's for sure. No, we'll get that. Dealer, you're going to stay as a paladin for now, but your points are going to go into Arcana and uh, a bit into mobility. want to clear that from mobility. Um, the reason they're going into Arcana is you need to have that at 5 in order to become a dragon disciple. You're going to be a duelist. Let's see what duelist needs. And mobility 2. Dodge. Weapon finesse, combat mobility. All right. Well, we can make that mobility too to begin with. Uh, we got slumber on that. It's a nice little spell to begin with. A nice little hex. Lan. Now we stick with this at the moment. Way of the bow, long bow. Then master bonus feet. We could take precise shot. And the reason I'm going to do that, uh, and also at level 3, not fast movement. It's an archery. At third level, as an archer may use his Molt Wizard modifier instead of his Dexterity modifier on his ranged attack rolls when using a bow. So we're going to be keeping that for level 3. After that, it can be fully Wisdom. I 
and he can bid through it. Precise shot, absolutely. Long bow. I'm probably, whenever she's with us, we're going to be working on making her a dragon disciple. If she comes back to us, I don't know if she does. Right now, that means a fighter, means Arcana, and uh, nice strike. You, Ressa, get on those. Now we're just going to have a quick run round and pick up uh, junk and sell it. And that will be where we end it there. Just want to get these done. Oh, we've got Harga Squirm here. I forgot about him. Finally, someone from the surface is beginning to lose hope. An elderly man in expensive but not ostentatious clothes approaches you. Face is peppered with several healed cuts and bruises and twisted in an expression of extreme discomfort, uh, discontent. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Holger Squirm. Yes, that Squirm. You no doubt heard of me if you spent any time in the city. I have a business proposition. I don't care who you are, what kind of proposition. I don't know what is happening on the surface right now, but I'm determined to find out. You have no intention of going the rest of your days in this village, I suspect. We must find a route back to the surface, to the city, if there's anyone left, anything left of it. You look like you spent your entire life surviving in the wilderness. I can't think of a better recommendation given the circumstances. You are strong. There will be no trouble to you. But I, alas, I'm not as fit as I once was. I can't go crawling about through the caves playing at scouts. My proposition is simple. Lead me back to the city and I shall pay you a thousand gold coins. I suspect this, if we help this man, we have, it would be good to have uh, friends among the Canabra's elite. I need an eight on that. August Gate is piercing. Are you taking advantage of my dice skill? Very well. Make it 2,000. Deal. Uh, we have to go. We know how he got there. He fell down front like we did. Right, down we go. all the stuff we can even if it's not worth a lot it's worth something this stuff here You got claws, Chicky. Get them off my body. You could. Oh, you don't want to come up. Okay. He's acting like he wants to come up, but then he runs away. That's okay. He can just bounce a little bit. And we've got Dara here. You there, a tall woman with a face deformed by an enormous swelling, marches broadly at you. man marches broadly at you, showing off her double row of small sharp teeth. 
You, you're from the surface. It must be tough to make it all the way here. Well, we kind of fell through a hole. Never thought I'd see the day. Call me Dido, let's trade. All right, let's trade. Get this to be math to work and one magical. All those can be sold. Uh, nothing there, nothing there. Sell that, that's 471. Sticky, you need to stop, mate. You really need to stop. And you need to let go of my headphones. Yes, you're getting yourself all wrapped up in the mount. You, there's a good boy. Right, now then. Not really anything there. Going to worry about. Uh, so what we're going to get is them. That's 550 deal. That leaves us 501. Uh, anything else we need? Wouldn't hurt to have them. A quiver of cold iron ammunition. That'll be useful. I don't know if we'll use it down here. We could do, because it's better for fighting demons. But, I don't think they're strong enough that we need. You'll see. Uh, not for you. For you. I don't really care about that one. Alright, so. We go to sleep. And then we're done. Messenger returned. The tribes are gathering at the entrance of the maze. Our people have already gone through. Gone there. I've warned Anivia that an old guy won't, uh, and that old guy who won't even acknowledge me. Take your time. There's no rush. The most important people always show up late. Lan looks around. Everything's going to plan, but one thing's bothering me. When the wag's gone? I'm not going to insult him. Uh, what do you think happened to Wedwag? Antic said, I don't know, she's always stubborn. Maybe she decided she could do it on her own. I hope she comes back. We'll struggle without her, and she'll struggle without us. No matter how hard, she'll try to admit it. Well, let's go then. Hold on a minute, I want to tell you something. To tell you that I'm sorry, truth be told, I had doubts that you'd help me persuade Sol. Not strong doubts, but still doubts. And I know how hard life is for tinkling on the surface, especially in Canabres. People used to mi uh, mistake me for a demon all the time, and I was living there. Lan taps his single horn. I remember how offended I felt when people treated me with prejudice. And then you came along, and I started to wonder if you were a cultist or a demon spy. Long story short, I was wrong. Forgive me. I know I could have kept this to myself, but I'm used to being honest. Okay. Well, thanks for giving for help, uh, giving the mongrels hope. It's like we've started to believe that we're worth something now that we have the power to, of the angels on our side. That's it. I guess that's all I wanted to say. Let's go through the main gate. The ro straight road is the shortest. Right. And that's where we'll end it. So I've been Private Yorkie. I'm heading back to the front. It's crazy out there. This has been the two hour. You've been wonderful. And this has been Pathfinder. That's of the righteous killing time run. Bye.